Thank you very much. It was a witch that gave me the double concussion that made me start hearing songs in the first place. A couple of years ago, this old witch drove her car into me as I raced to a summer job on my bike. She wasn't a bad witch necessarily, but she wasn't a good witch either. I remember her blank face over the steering wheel about to plow into me like she was on a mission. <laughs> I pedaled as fast as I could trying to escape her speeding Chevy, but I never made it to work that day. Instead, I flew up into the air. One minute, everything was like it usually is, and the next, I was flying. Flying through the air in vivid slow motion, thinking, so this is what this feels like. As the pavement came toward me, time stopped abruptly. I hovered over the street, Tree branches blew in the breeze. I could smell cut grass. Somehow, I hung between flying up and falling down. A thought occurred. You're about to hit your head harder than you've ever hit it before, so maybe you should, you know, go limp. <laughs> I did. As soon as I relaxed my muscles, time sped up, and the ground jumped up in the air, crashing into my head. I slid down the street on my face for a while, then flipped over, my neck snapped back, and my legs twisted up underneath me. The witch and her Chevy were long gone. She hit and ran. I lay there on the street feeling the brand new sensation of a lot of blood leaving my body, then tried to unfold myself. Lifting my left leg, I noticed that there was no longer a foot at the end of it. Suddenly, I was very, very thirsty. Blood spread across the ground in a deep red puddle pouring into the sewer. I had never seen blood pour into a sewer before. It looks really cool. <laughs> <laughs> then a woman appeared from nowhere and leaned over me. She was wearing mirrored sunglasses, of all things. <laughs> what I saw in her glasses was bizarre. I had no face. The front of my head was hamburger and blood with two blue eyes staring out. Even my hair was red with blood. It snaked out from under me, unrecognizable as hair. Medusa, I thought. <laughs> Behind the woman's head and my monstrous reflection was a clear blue sky. When I turned away to look for my missing foot, the woman grabbed what used to be my face and turned it toward her. You were hit by a car! She spoke loudly and slowly, carefully articulating each word. You're going to be fine. Why is she talking to me like I'm foreign? <laughs> I flashed on seventh grade health class where they taught us what to do in case we ever came upon an accident. We learned to tie tourniquets and perform CPR, how to recognize the symptoms of shock, and what happens to the person in the back seat if you keep a crowbar on the dash. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> they also taught us how to talk to the victim. You speak loudly and slowly, carefully articulating each word. You tell them what's wrong, and then you tell them they're going to be fine. <laughs> you have a crowbar through the middle of your skull. <laughs> You're gonna be fine. <laughs> A few more people joined the mirrored sunglasses lady, kneeling on the ground, looking concerned. I thought about asking them to help me look for my foot, but figured if I were them, I wouldn't want hamburger talking to me. <laughs> so I felt underneath my leg and found the foot myself. I was sticking it back on when I saw my mother's face floating in the clear blue sky. Ah, oh, geez, I'm dead. You're definitely dead if you get hit by a car and then see your mother's face floating in a clear blue sky. Wait, my mother isn't dead. I noticed her car parked by the side of the road. Hi, Mom, I said. She looked upset. What's wrong? I heard sirens as she started to cry. A few days later, lying in my hospital bed, I heard my first song, 
a metallic whining like industrial noise on a wash of ocean waves layered with humming tones and wind chimes. Intermittent voices talked and sang. I thought it was the TV in the next room. The TV never shut up, though nobody ever turned it off or even changed the channel. I started to worry that the patient next door had died or slipped into a coma. When the noise increased in volume, I asked the nurse what it was. I don't know what you hear in Dia, she said kindly. <laughs> Dear is pronounced Dia in Rhode Island. They take the R's off words here and put them on other words. <laughs> For example, boa constrictor is pronounced boer constricta. <laughs> This room over here is empty, and little Josh on the other side has taken a nap. He isn't watching TV. She frowned. I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe you're hearing machines? Machines? I asked. Machines? She asked again, perplexed. We stared at each other, but neither of us could answer the question. Soon the song began organizing itself into discernible parts that sounded less like machines. Instruments played melodies rather than disembodied tones in the bed of ocean waves. Bass, guitar, piano, cello. Punctuated clanging became drums and percussion. I guessed that my brain was making sense of something, turning this sonic haunting into vocabulary with which I was familiar. It was also irresistibly colorful. Each chord I heard carried with it the impression of a color. These colors blending along with the chords and a gentle swath of sound light. Each beat had a shape that appeared and then disappeared instantly, creating its own visual pattern that coincided with the rhythm. I watched and listened, bewildered and enthralled, as sound and color filled my empty hospital room. One of the humming voices eventually refined itself enough for me to discern syllables in its talking and moaning, Unintelligible at first, the syllables eventually arranged themselves into words that told stories from my life, clarified by dreamlike images, animated home movies, a mythology of reality. The lyrics were at once impassioned and removed, as if someone else, someone who cared, was telling me what happened in black and white, and then coloring it in with dream crayons. It's not like I've embraced the songwriting process. I haven't even accepted it. It's too creepy. There's an electrical component, for example, the lightning rod thing. I get all flitchy and my hair stands on end like a seizure with a heightened awareness of meaning, for a lack of a better word, that feels like possession. Whatever is important at that moment will jump up into the air and grab my electrified brain. I sit on my grandparents' porch in the dappled Chattanooga sunshine and play records I found in their attic, sing along folk songs for children. Pressing thick plastic discs of bright red and milky blue over the spindle on my little portable record player, I listen to people who are probably dead now sing scratchily. Hi-ho the Dario, a kid eat Ivy too, pop goes the weasel, the cheese stands alone. I'm stunned. This is the music regular kids listen to? It's insane. 